Folks always say everything gets a hundred times harder in space, and apparently, that includes something as simple as opening a door. We saw that firsthand during Starship's Flight 9. The mission was going well up to that point, but when it came time to open the payload bay and release those dummy satellites, well, the door just didn't fully open. So what on Earth, or off-Earth, went wrong? And more importantly, how can this space door drama be fixed? Let's have David and the Starship Mission Update team take a closer look. The big difference between Starship and something like a submarine comes down to how pressure works in their environments. Submarines are built to handle pressure from the outside. When you're deep underwater, all that water's pushing in on the hull. That's why submarine doors are designed to open outward. The water pressure actually helps keep the door sealed shut. Spacecraft work in the opposite way. In space, there's no air outside because it's a vacuum. That means all the pressure is coming from inside the spacecraft. So most spacecraft doors open inward. The pressure inside the cabin helps press the door against the frame, which makes for a more secure seal. But Starship is a little different. Its payload bay isn't pressurized at all. There's no internal pressure to help push the door outward or hold it in place. That means the door has to rely completely on its mechanical systems to move and stay secure. And that's where things can get tricky. Mechanical systems that work great on Earth don't always behave the same way in space. Once Starship is in orbit, the absence of gravity can cause parts to shift slightly. Metal structures that were assembled on Earth might relax once the force of gravity is gone. That small shift can mess with how parts fit together. Something that used to move freely might now be wedged too tightly to move at all. Temperature swings in space add another challenge. One side of the vehicle might be in direct sunlight, while the other is freezing cold. That kind of extreme heat and cold can cause parts to expand or contract. When you're dealing with tight tolerances in moving pieces, even small changes like that can make things jam up or behave unpredictably. To make things even more complicated, Ship 35 was dealing with some issues during that flight. Almost immediately after the engines shut down, the ship began to tumble unexpectedly. It tried to correct itself using other vents. But as we later found out, there were leaks in the fuel systems inside the vehicle. Starship's attitude control system relies on the gas in the space above the liquid propellant inside its tanks. If there's a leak, the tank can't build up enough pressure, and the system stops working properly. Even so, we still got several good views of the payload bay. One camera was looking down onto the dummy satellites in the forward dome beneath them. You can actually see particles floating around, showing how the ship was spinning out of control. Their movement changes as the coast phase continues, making the spin even more noticeable. So how does all of this connect to the payload door not opening? Well, if any of the leaking fluids made their way into the payload bay, they could have messed with the pressure balance or caused unexpected resistance in the door mechanism. That alone could explain why the door didn't open properly. There's also the possibility that the spinning itself interfered with the door operation. It's not hard to imagine that the system has built-in safety limits to prevent the door from opening while the ship is rotating too much. So let's talk about possible solutions. SpaceX will likely need to add stronger structural reinforcements to help stabilize the payload door. These reinforcements have to be strong enough to keep the door secure during all phases of flight, but still flexible enough to work smoothly with the actuator system. The goal is to develop a design that allows the door to open and close reliably, even in the low-pressure environment of space, improving things like alignment, locking mechanisms, and actuator coordination will probably be part of the fix as well. SpaceX can also take some inspiration from an iconic NASA vehicle that already tackled these challenges, the Space Shuttle. The shuttle's payload bay was not built to handle pressure differences. In other words, it could not survive being pressurized while the outside was a vacuum, or vice versa. To deal with this, NASA used a system of vents and ducts to manage airflow and pressure. This setup was called the Active Vent System, or AVS.
The AVS used motor-driven doors controlled by the onboard computers. Before launch, the doors were either closed or slightly open in a purge position to keep any propellant vapors from entering the bay. Some compartments were also being purged with dry air from ground systems. Right before launch, all the doors were fully open so that as the shuttle climbed and the outside pressure dropped, air from the payload bay could flow out. The doors stayed open throughout the ascent and while the shuttle was in orbit. Before re-entry, the crew would close the doors by sending commands to the onboard computer. During the deorbit burn, some of the rear doors reopened briefly to vent out any vapors that had built up. Then all the doors were automatically closed again before the shuttle reached the entry interface. During the early part of re-entry, the doors stayed shut to keep hot plasma out of the payload bay. Once the vehicle slowed to Mach 2.4 at around 85,000 feet altitude, the doors opened again to let air flow into the bay and equalize pressure. Even in emergency scenarios like ascent aborts, the door sequence was handled automatically. But honestly, I'm not sure how much Starship can really learn from the shuttle's payload bay design, since Starship uses a pretty unique deployment system of its own. It's called the PEZ dispenser. And yes, if you're picturing one of those little candy toys that pushes out a single rectangular candy from a small slot, you're thinking in the right direction. That's basically how SpaceX deploys its Starlink satellites. The Piaz dispenser system uses a sliding door that opens on the side of Starship. It's not a huge door, but it doesn't need to be. The satellites inside are stacked in a way that lets them slide out through this slot, kind of like dropping a letter through a mail slot. To keep the area around the opening strong and stable, there are a bunch of doubler plates built into the structure around it. These doubler plates add extra material and reinforcement to handle the stresses in that section. Think of it like a window in a house. The glass itself doesn't hold up the building, but the frame around it does. Same idea here. The door panel itself isn't a structural part of the vehicle, but the reinforced frame around it takes care of the structural stability. So whether the door is open or closed doesn't make much of a difference structurally, since the payload bay isn't pressurized anyway. To actually open the door, a set of pistons pulls it upward. As it opens, the panel tilts inward slightly while moving up. Of course, the satellites don't just fall out on their own. The PEZ dispenser uses an active system to push them out. Inside, there are two floating roller tracks that run along the bottom. Along these, two chain drives move in parallel, providing the force needed to roll the satellites out of the bay. We even got a good look at these chains in the interior shots from Flight 9's payload bay. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see them in action this time. In the future, Starship is expected to carry not only Starlink satellites, but a wide variety of payloads, including ultimately human passengers. As its mission profile expands, Starship will move beyond the current PEZ dispenser deployment system. One of the most likely alternatives is the clamshell payload door, which opens by folding back the entire leeward side of the payload bay. According to the Starship user guide back in 2020, the Starship payload fairing is a clamshell structure in which the payload is integrated. Once integrated, the clamshell fairing remains closed through launch until the payload is ready to deploy. To deploy the payload, the clamshell fairing doors opened and the payload adapter and payload are tilted at an angle in preparation for separation. The payload is then separated using the mission unique payload adapter. If there are multiple payloads on a single mission, a rotating mechanism can be provided to allow each satellite to separate with maximum clearance. Once separation is confirmed and the payloads have cleared the fairing, the payload fairing door is closed in preparation for Starship's return to Earth. This new fairing door is essential for missions to the Moon or Mars, where Starship will need to transport large payloads and infrastructure to support the construction of a permanent base. Its wide clamshell-style opening allows for the deployment and retrieval of oversized cargo that wouldn't fit through traditional fairings. Interestingly, Elon Musk has even suggested that this door could enable Starship to collect orbital debris. When asked about this on X back in 2021, he replied simply, We can fly a Starship around space and chomp up debris with a moving fairing door. 
In essence, Starship could act like a kind of space whale, scooping up junk as it orbits the Earth. Okay, putting the technical stuff aside for a moment, things seem to be heating up at the Oval Office. About $2.2 billion worth of SpaceX's government contracts are now potentially at risk, and several major U.S. space programs could face serious disruption due to a public feud between Elon Musk and President Donald Trump. It all started when Musk criticized Trump's tax cut and spending legislation last week. The disagreement quickly escalated. Trump reportedly lashed out at Musk during a conversation in the Oval Office, and Musk responded, with a series of pointed posts on X. In one of them, Trump threatened to terminate SpaceX's government contracts. Musk fired back by saying he would begin decommissioning the Dragon spacecraft used by NASA. That comment sent shockwaves through the space community. Dragon is currently the only American spacecraft capable of carrying astronauts to and from the International Space Station under a roughly $5 billion contract with NASA. Pulling it out of service would have a huge impact not just on NASA, but on the dozens of countries participating in the ISS program under a decades-old international agreement. However, just hours later, Musk seemed to backtrack. Responding to a follower on X who suggested both he and Trump cool off and take a step back, Musk replied, Good advice. Okay, we won't decommission Dragon. Still, the mere threat to pull Dragon from service marked a rare and dramatic outburst from one of NASA's most important commercial partners. While NASA does have access to Russia's Soyuz spacecraft as a backup, any disruption to Dragon would be a major complication. Even though Musk once claimed he was done with politics, it is clear that detangling himself from it will not happen overnight. Personally, I just hope he refocuses on what he does best running SpaceX and building the future of space exploration. His company needs him, and that is where he has always made the biggest impact. After all these fascinating stories about the cosmos, let's ask ourselves, with all these complex engineering challenges and political twists, what's the biggest hurdle Starship needs to overcome to make space travel truly routine? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. David from the Starship Mission Update team extends our most sincere thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Don't forget to heart the video and hit that subscribe button to not miss any launches of news from SpaceX. Thank you for watching and always remember, every journey to space begins with a look up at the sky.